Hello guys and welcome to another installment in the video computers and technology. In the last episode we took a look at this Dell Latitude 2120 that I bought off eBay for 25 bucks and for the most part I really liked it. Build quality was awesome, form factor was exactly what I wanted, it was nice and light uh, but it just wasn't powerful enough. There wasn't enough beef behind that Intel Atom N455 single core processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. Um, so I went ahead went on eBay and bought the model with the N550, which is a dual core processor with four threads running at 1.5 gigahertz. And today we're gonna see if the extra price was worth it. Now, you're probably wondering why this box is so big and that's because I have triple the fun here today. I bought three of the Dell Latitude 2120s. The one that's in the best condition I'm going to keep and I'm going to try to flip the other two for a profit. But first we're gonna have to unbox these and I'll uh, take a look at them. We'll check out the cosmetic condition. Once again, it's the same thing with this. I wasn't really sure what condition this would be in. Of course there were pictures, but I wasn't 100% sure. So it's kind of a mystery. We'll see if uh, if these were at, or if these are going to be as nice as this Dell Latitude 2120 was. Uh, and I'll try to get some uh, close-ups up on the screen right now, but this one is in pretty much perfect condition. There's like one bump and one scrape, but besides that, it is absolutely beautiful. So let's go ahead and get to that unboxing. So I'm gonna keep the camera a little bit further back than I usually do just because the package is so big, but I didn't tell you guys how much I got these for. I got these for 35 bucks a pop plus shipping. So let's go ahead and open this up. I am really excited. I got these yesterday and I just didn't have time to open them, so I am dying right now. I really wanna see what kind of condition these are gonna be in. So this time I'm not too concerned about the packaging and I'm I, that was kind of loud so I'm sorry uh, if the audio gets kind of irritating here. All right. All right, so there we go. So here is an invoice and this actually tells me how much the total was. So total uh, including shipping was 135 bucks. So I'm gonna go in here and it looks like we have all the laptops lined up. And I didn't mention that these also come with cases as well. So we'll check out what kind of condition those are in too. Oh, and it looks like the laptops are actually in the cases. So that was a good idea actually. Great way to uh, protect them during shipping. So there's one and the case looks like it's in uh, well, the case looks like it's in pretty good condition. I'm just gonna open one. I'll pull it out of the uh, bubble wrap. I'm trying not to get packing peanuts everywhere. So there we go, there's one, it's in a uh, Targus case. I'm just gonna open that one up. Okay, wow. Uh, <laughs> once again, in nearly perfect condition it looks like. That looks great. Oh my God, this one's beautiful. I hope the rest of them are just like that. I mean, that looks absolutely flawless. <laughs> wow, these look brand new, that's, that's crazy. All right. So, so far, so good. I'm uh, pretty happy so far. So I'm gonna move this one off to the side and take the uh, other two out and I'm gonna move the box out of the way so you guys can get a uh, closer look. So far, so good. I was kind of disappointed with the price I paid for these. I thought I might have overpaid, but if all of them turn out like this, um, I think I got my money's worth and I'm definitely gonna be able to flip them for more than I bought them for. Uh, I didn't mention yet that these are from a surplus school auction. So once again, uh, that was also kind of a concern for me. You know, kids using computers. I was like, oh God, what if they arrive like all beat up and everything, but no, uh, this looks great. So let's go ahead and pull the next two out and see if they arrived in the same condition. Once again, same story here. This one, <laughs> this one actually looks better than the first one. That one looks absolutely beautiful as well. These things are coming out great. So I'm just gonna kind of stack them up over here. I'll throw the case off to the side. And we have one more. Let's cross our fingers and pray that this one comes out just as beautiful as the other two. And these cases are in very good condition as well. And I think I might actually, uh, use one of these cases for school. I mean, the laptop fits in them perfectly. So we have the third one right here. Same story, looks great. Now let's open it up. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> this, this is awesome. All right, so all of them have shipped in pretty much new condition. That is, that is just great. I'm really satisfied right now, guys.
fire each one up one at a time. So I'm going to start from the left and work our way over. We have light, so that's good. I can actually hear the hard drive spinning up. These all have 250 gigabyte hard drives installed already, so that's great. Uh, don't have to deal with finding a drive and throwing it in here. Uh, they already have drives, even though my model, uh, whichever one I choose, will be uh, equipped with a solid state drive. So yes, I'm going to have to take one of these apart and throw a solid state drive in. So that one looks like it is good. And you know what, let's speed things up. Those two look like they are coming on just fine. There we go, there's the post screen. Post screen, let's get to the BIOS. And I hear those drives spinning up. Music to my ears. And we are in the BIOS on all three. So let's check out the system information and make sure I got all three models with the Atom N 550. They're all rocking the exact same system specifications, so we're just going to take a look at this one. Yes, they all do have the Intel Atom N550 at 1.5 gigahertz. They all have one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM installed. They all have a 250 gigabyte hard drive installed. Um, they are using the standard definition screen, 1024 by 600. I believe there's a, a 720p version of this model too. And we're using the same graphics chipset as we were using uh, with this model, which had the N450 in it. We're using the Intel GMA3 uh, 3150 graphics. And then if we scroll down, uh, you can see that there is a wireless adapter installed. And really that's about it. If we go to the battery information, that you can see that the BIOS is detecting the battery health of all of these actually as normal. So that is great too. For the past 10 minutes now, I've been going over all three to find which one is in the best cosmetic condition. And I chose this one because it has a little bit less wear on the rubber coating all around the laptop. But besides that, it's pretty much in the same condition as the other two. I'm going to fly by and take a look at some of the IO ports and some of the features that this laptop has really quick because I have already taken a look at pretty much this exact same model in one of my last videos, which was this model with the N455 Intel Atom processor. So just going to go over this real quick, then we're going to tear it down, throw in a solid state drive, and install Zubuntu to see how uh, the performance has improved over the N455 processor. So if we take a look on the left, you can see a USB 2.0 port, audio in, audio out, VGA, uh, Kensing uh, Kensington lock slot. This particular netbook actually has two Kensington lock slots, which is kind of odd. Uh, you can see another two USB 2.0 ports right here, Ethernet, power jack, uh, at the front, you can see our SD card reader right here. It actually has the dummy card in it still, so that's great. The other model did not. The one that I ordered for 25 bucks, the N455 model. If we look at the bottom, you can see there's nothing really here. I'm going to try to mask the uh, Microsoft uh, Windows 7 sticker because I am going to use that. You can see that this has the upgraded 6-cell lithium-ion battery, and I think that's really about it. I'll give you a quick look inside. And by the way, this is a Wi-Fi indication light right here. You can turn this on in the BIOS and when the Wi-Fi is on it will light up to notify uh, actually teachers if uh, the student is connected to the Wi-Fi or not because these are a lot of these were used in schools most of the time so if I flip this around you can see that this does has a this does have a webcam I'm not sure if that's coming out on camera I'm gonna move over to the back of the camera real quick to check out uh, what exactly is in frame the trackpad has minimal wear, the buttons have minimal wear, the keyboard feels and looks great, and the screen has no imperfections either. You can see two speakers right here, and hopefully, uh, this time I'm going to install Zubuntu 16.04. The new LTS release is out, and hopefully the audio actually works, because with 15.10, I ran an update and it broke the audio, which kind of sucked. Hopefully this video, we can actually check out uh, what the audio sounds like on this little netbook. So now I'm going to tear it down, throw in a solid state drive. Uh, and give you guys a look of what exactly is inside here. Here are the two laptops side by side with their back covers off. This is the one I ordered last week with the N455 processor. This is the one that just came in with the N550 processor. Now I know I'm going to get some complaints in the comment section about how I didn't tear everything down on camera and that's because I already did that last week. It's the exact same process. It's in last week's video. If you want to check out the link for last week's video will be in the description. So let's take a quick look at everything. Uh, pretty much everything is identical. Now you can see that we have two gigabytes of RAM in the old system. That is going to be swapped out and put into this system which only has one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. You can see that 250 gigabyte hard drive right here. Uh, I will give you guys a closer look at this after I remove it. Uh, and pretty much everything else is the same. You can see that the heat sinks are exactly the same. This one is a little bit lighter so it might be made out of a different alloy. Um, and you know, 
that's really about it. It's the exact same configuration. One thing that I do notice right off the bat is that the wireless cards might be different. Let me take a look at the serial numbers on these. Yeah, so these are slightly different wireless cards. As you can see, the pads on this one are nice silver, uh, and, the and the pads on this one look like they are copper-plated. Um, so yeah, these are definitely different wireless cards, and that is kind of a concern for me because the wireless card in this system worked perfectly right out of the box with Zubintu, and hopefully this one does as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to swap them out right now. Uh, I might just chant it and see if this one works with Zubintu. It probably will. Uh, and I think I'm just going to leave it in here. So let's go ahead and swap the drives out, swap the RAM out, and then we will throw everything back together, install Zubintu, and check out the performance. Um, I don't think there's really anything else I need to talk about here that I didn't talk about last week. So once again, if you want a little bit more info, check out last week's video. So there's our hard drive. This is a Western Digital Scorpio Blue Drive, 250 gigabyte capacity, running at 5,400 RPM, manufactured in February of 2011. And then that is going to be replaced by this cheap little King Spec 16 gigabyte solid state drive. And if I do decide to stick with this netbook, I'm going to upgrade to a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. Now I'm just testing everything out with the previous installation of Zubintu 15.10 that was already installed on the solid state drive that I was using previously with the N455 model. And I have to say, uh, the N550 brings a massive performance increase. Uh, pretty much double the performance of the N455, and that's pretty much what I expected because they're almost the same processors, except the N550 has two cores and four threads, unlike the N455, which only has one core and two threads. But yeah, internet browsing is nice and smooth. I can open up multiple applications. Multitasking is definitely there. I can actually use Chromium. Uh, before I was using, uh, before when I was using the other laptop, I had to use a lighter weight internet browser which was actually very good you guys should tech, uh, check this out it's called cupzilla i believe q u p z i l l a and it is a very lightweight very fast internet browser i absolutely loved it uh, did have some issues with some content but for the most part it was a great little internet browser now I've been playing around with two of these netbooks with the N550 processors in them and I have to say that performance with Zubintu 16.04 is awesome. Everything's snappy, really loving all the new updates, uh, especially the GNOME Software Center. I am so glad they got rid of the old Software Center because it was incredibly slow. Uh, for some reason it was just really taxing on the CPU. It took forever to open and it was just an awful experience. It was easier just to open up uh, the terminal and use apt-get. And over here, you can see that I have Windows 7 Pro installed and that experience isn't too pleasant. Uh, there's one gigabyte of RAM in all three of these systems. Um, so yeah, Windows 7 Pro is kind of eating all that up. I'm running an update right now and it's cutting into the page file. The system's coming to a halt and everything's just not performing too well. So I will demo uh, the system with Windows 7 installed for you know, a minute or two, but I am gonna wipe it and put a lightweight Linux distro such as Zubintu on it. And that's how I'm going to sell it because I think that's going to give the user a better user experience uh, because yeah, Windows 7 Pro isn't performing too well uh, as we'll see in just a second. So you can see in the task manager that Windows is just eating up all of the RAM on this system. Pretty much as of now, it is unresponsive. I'm trying to move around here and I'm probably going to have to restart the system. No guys, I am not a Windows hater. I use Windows every single day in production and it has its place. I like Windows, uh, but its place is definitely not on this netbook with only one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, this is definitely gonna be better off uh, using a Linux distribution. So I'm gonna shut this down, restart it, and then we'll demo the system performance. But before I do that, we're gonna take a look at the netbook with Zubintu 16.04 installed. All right, so you guys are looking at the Zubintu machine right now. We're just gonna time boot time real quick. I am going to include the power on self test in this just as I did last time with the N455 model. So powering it on now, starting the timer, and let's see how long it takes to get into the login screen. So we made it to the login screen just shy of 30 seconds, not too shabby at all. That's actually a little bit faster than the N455 system. Granted, we are running a newer version of Zubintu. This is 16.04. Uh, the last test I did was 15.10, so that is something you do have to keep in mind as well. Uh, that might be a small factor. I'm going to go ahead and log in and just see how long it takes to get to the desktop from here. It'll probably take about 10 seconds. 
From login to the desktop, it took about another 10 seconds, so total about 40 seconds to get to the desktop and everything uh, fully loaded right here. So let's just try doing some basic tasks right now. I'm going to pop open a word processor. Let's go to LibreOffice Writer. I still haven't installed all the programs that I meant to. Uh, I'm going to do that later. Uh, it's not really important for this video, but you can see LibreOffice Writer, Writer opens just fine. Uh, didn't take too long at all. We'll open up uh, Calc. We'll do some multitasking right here with that two gigabytes of RAM. That we have let's open up a terminal at the same time this is nice and snappy really liking the responsiveness of the system my voice just kind of cracked there excuse me guys and pop open an instance of file manager just going absolutely crazy here and you can see how responsive the system still is absolutely great uh, especially for something that i think is around four to five years old right now and you can see the new gnome software center right there honestly i don't think it looks that much better uh, then the old software center, but as far as responsiveness goes, it's a lot more responsive, a lot lighter on resources, and in general, more pleasant to use. Uh, but as far as looks go, uh, it's okay. It's it's okay. It's not great. Uh, it's, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's one of those things that gets the job done, and that's really all that matters here. Well, even with all these applications open, let's go ahead and pop open an instance of Chromium and try browsing over, uh, browsing around the web for a little bit. There we go. It took a little bit longer than uh, it did last time for some reason, but Google Chrome is now open. Let's just navigate to my website, www.acomputersandtechnology.com. And as far as web browsing goes, the experience is much more pleasant with the N550 processor. Uh, web browsing was really jerky with the N455. It was uh, pretty unpleasant to navigate around pages. This is much better. Once again, we're getting twice the performance with that uh, N550 processor versus the N450 processor, or 455, excuse me. Now, it, it, it is still a little bit... Uh, jerky at times but in general overall experience is tons better you can see that now that the page is fully loaded up scrolling is nice and smooth i can navigate around the tabs just fine uh, and things don't slow down with this system when you start to open multiple tabs up so we'll do that now i'll pop open another tab we'll navigate to youtube and i can already uh i can already see the comments in this video oh my god you talk so much i can't believe you talk this much well if you wanted this to be you know one of those videos where someone just turns on a computer and boots into windows there's plenty of those all around youtube that you can go watch with absolutely no commentary i have absolutely no problem with you going over and checking one of those out all right, so this is actually, whoa. All right, so the audio is definitely working. Let me see if my uh, quick access buttons are working. Yes, those are. Uh, so this is the last video last week with the uh, other netbook, uh, the exact same model, but with a different processor and is playing back in 480p now. Let me go ahead and maximize this. Uh, when we did play this back with the other netbook, it was pretty jerky, had some issues with video playback, but everything's nice and smooth now. And as you can hear, or let me turn it up, Hopefully that's coming out on the microphone, but the uh, audio is actually working with 16.04 and nothing's broken, thank goodness. So 480p video playback is A-OK -okay there. Let's bump it up to 720 and going above that, there's really no point. Uh, so let's stop at 720 and see if that plays back smoothly. Because once again, the uh, resolution of the screen is not 1080p, uh, not even 720p. Uh, we're a little bit below that. And I forgot, I do record at uh, 60 FPS, so this is 720 at 60 FPS. A little bit taxing for the system. Um, as you can see, it is locking up every uh, once in a while, but now, no. Yeah, like every five seconds, it kind of pauses for a minute. Yeah, so may maybe not maybe not 720p at 60 FPS, but it's definitely fine with 480p playback, and that's really all I need um, as far as this laptop is concerned. This is just the school laptop, and 480p playback is absolutely adequate. Okay, so I think that's enough as far as video playback is concerned. I'm going to close out of this, and we'll go navigate to something that 
Oh, you know what? Let me raise the mic up to my face. There you go. Now you guys should hear me better. Uh, but let's navigate to something that always gets my system, and that's navigating to CNN.com. And I always say this in every single video, but for some reason, CNN's website is just an absolute mess, really taxing on any system that I use, even if it's like uh, uh, my FX 6300 system, it still does slow it down a little bit. So uh, yeah, I, their website's just absolutely ridiculous. So let's go to CNN.com. I mean, content-wise, it's okay, but the, actually, the actual like structure of the website is... Uh, it, start, it gets on my nerves because it slows systems down a lot. All right, and it looks, uh, looks like we're actually going to be able to start loading some stuff. There we go. Oh, so not too bad. It didn't bring the uh, system to a screeching halt. That's, that's actually kind of surprising. Hmm. I'm actually pretty impressed right now. I mean, uh, the scrolling is pretty jerky. It has all the ads and all these like pop-ups on the page. That's that's why it's killer to like uh, older systems like this. So I'm trying to close that pop-up, which is incredibly annoying. Yeah, your your terms and service have changed. I don't care. Uh, let's go ahead and pop open a uh, instance of Task Manager because I haven't done that yet. Task Manager. Let's see how much RAM we are actually using. Uh, and yeah, only 33% of the two gigabytes in the system. So two gigs is definitely going to be enough for this operating system and what I plan to do with it. Uh, and you can see our CPU usage did spike up a little bit when I was actually loading the web page. But now that's done, everything has settled back down to normal. And we should be able to scroll the page yeah, semi-smoothly. So not too bad there. That's actually uh, pretty impressive. So far, I feel like this is something that I'm definitely going to stick with. I like the performance, and as I said earlier, the form factor and durability of this laptop is top-notch. Really like the form factor. It's really tough, um, really well-built little system. And eventually, when I get a larger solid-state drive, I do plan on putting Windows 7 on this thing. So that will be a video coming up hopefully in the near future, because I hope I will have the uh, money around to buy uh, another 120 gigabyte solid state drive. But I think I'm going to call it as far as the demo goes for this system. So I'm going to toss this off to the side. I'm going to close it because it will suspend when I close it. And then I'm going to bring over the Windows 7 machine and we'll take a look at that. Now you're looking at the Windows 7 machine and we're going to do the same thing with the boot time. I got my timer out right here and we're going to time how long it takes to get from the power on self-test or I guess just power on in general uh, to the desktop since this doesn't have a logging. This is in no way a comparison, especially since this system only has a uh, traditional 5200 RPM hard drive. So not really a comparison to uh, the Zubuntu system. It's just for the record. So I'm going to power it on now. We're going to start the timer. So even with that traditional 5,400 RPM hard drive in this system, it only took about 45 seconds to get to the desktop and have all the uh, icons and everything else load up. So that's actually not too bad, especially considering that this system only has one gigabyte of RAM. Um, and then let's open up the task manager. I wonder how much of the uh, system resources we're using right now. So as you can see, we're only using about 400 megabytes of the total uh, of one gigabyte of system RAM. So not too bad right now. Let's just start moving around, navigating, around the operating system itself. Once again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I do plan on wiping this and uh, I didn't mean to go that way, uh, but wiping this and putting a lightweight Linux distro because it's going to be much better for me, much easier for me, and much better for anyone who actually buys this system. So there you go. You can get uh, all the system specs right there, but we have already seen those. Uh, scroll down here. I'm going to run a uh, system rating if it will run just to see what this will score. And while it's running those assessments, I did run into my first real bug was we've been to 14.04. Not really sure how to fix this, but my mouse disappeared after it woke up from the suspended state. Uh, as you can see, it is gone. I'm floating over these icons apparently, but you can see that there's actually no cursor. So yeah, that's kind of frustrating. I'm going to have to look up how to fix that. So our results are in. You can see our processor scored a 3.1, memory scored a 4.5, graphics scored a 1.0. That might do it a little bit better if I had the proper drivers installed. And you can see our primary hard disk scored a 5.8. The system is actually maxing out the RAM right now, so I'm not actually sure how much more we're going to be able to do. Oh, it did drop a little bit, thank goodness, um, because it was locking up before. Now it is a little bit more responsive. Now, I could optimize this version of Windows to make it useful usable on one gigabyte of RAM. I have done that before. Uh, I've run Windows 7 on all the way down to, I think, 384 megabytes of RAM uh, with the proper optimization, and it ran just fine. But it's not something that I want to ship to a customer, and that's why I 
I am uh, choosing to install Linux on these machines. So I'm going to close out of that. We'll just navigate around a little bit. I'm not going to do any, you know, internet browsing or anything right now uh, like that. I'm just going to open up computer. We'll check out the uh, devices. You can see our hard drive right there. Let's go into device manager to take a deeper look at everything. D E V I C E. We go pop device manager open. You can see for the most part right now, since we don't have too much open, it is pretty responsive. Uh, maybe I spoke too soon because there we go. Now device manager opened up. Now, uh, but not super pleasant to use. It's it's okay. It's it's okay. It's uh, usable, but as far as user experience goes, it's kind of torturous. Not something I would want to subject a customer to. So I'll go down here. Uh, computer. Where? There we go. So I'll just scroll down here if you guys are curious. Uh, we'll go through all of this. Yeah. And it has an accelerometer. I think that's one of those uh, drop protection things since, well, these have uh, the traditional spinning hard drives in them. So uh, that's to shut the system off before it actually hits the ground to, pre uh, to prevent damage from uh, the, or to the hard drives. Wow, I'm, I'm out of it right now. I'm starting to lose it. I'm losing it, guys. And I think that's really going to be about it for this demo of Windows. I, as I said earlier, not going to take too much time on this because it is going to be wiped. But yes, Windows 7 and Windows 10 can run on these machines. So that's going to be about it for this installment of A Computers and Technology. I am using the built-in webcam and microphone on the system right now. It looks like the video is coming out a little bit jerky, so I apologize for that. But it is the end of the video, so eh, it's not really that big of a deal. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like this video, please leave a reason why. And of course, if you haven't yet please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's really weird watching myself in the webcam app. Uh, yeah, but I'm definitely satisfied with this purchase. Really happy with the way these laptops came out uh, and can't wait to see how much I can actually flip them for. If you haven't signed up for this month's giveaway, I suggest you do because currently there's only like five entries. So your chances are pretty darn good. Uh, don't forget you can support me by using my Amazon and eBay affiliate links. You can also support me through my patreon account and don't forget to like us on facebook that's gonna be about it for this video we'll see you guys in the next installment of a computers and technology